Oops. I, I guess I guess that was it. Um, let's let's do this one real quick. Is it Tracy? Yeah. How you doing, Tracy? Okay. Did you? If if you got your TV on, you may want to turn it down. There, I think there's like a four second delay or something. Okay. So. I'll do that right now. Yeah, and I'm watching it, and it's kind of tripping me out, yeah. too. Okay. It, it just focus on the phone and ignore the TV. It's really distracting. Okay, cool. So, what did, do you have a question for us? I do. Uh, looking at your program, and I'm wondering, when we take the Bible, and what you were just talking about with that other guy, and you take, no, let's not say the Bible. Let's just go for creationist, and then we go with evolutionist. Let's go all the way back. Because here's a tripped out thought right here. If you take it all the way back, all the way back I'm talking where? about all the way back before there was time. Did you know, I've heard about oh, creationists stop. and evolutionists agree on one thing. Um, first of all, I, I don't agree with your premise that you can take it back to before there was time. Okay. Well, there was a singularity when they said that there was a point in time where there was nothing. That's what evolution said. They, they, you go back in time to a point no, where there actually, was absolutely no molecules, no, no nothing, no. and all of a sudden there's a bang. No. no. Uh, no. First of all, evolution relates to biology. It only deals with what happens to life after it forms. It has nothing to do with cosmology or the universe or abiogenesis or anything like that. So evolution, oh, has, okay, okay. evolution has nothing to say on that. However, the, uh, what, what you're saying about uh, going back to a time when there was nothing um, while we don't know exactly how the universe started, the, the prevalent theories don't say there wasn't anything. As a matter of fact, the first law of thermodynamics is that uh, nothing, uh, matter and energy can't be created or destroyed. They can only change form. So that would dictate that the universe has always existed in some form. Now, can you the, give me a lowdown on the Big Bang Theory then? What, what is the Big Bang Theory in your mind? That's, that's kind of what I was just doing. Basically, if you trace back, and, and the Big Bang has been confirmed, it's as much of a, a confirmed uh, theory slash fact as anything else you'll find. The cosmic background microwave radiation, um, which was predicted by the Big Bang Theory, has been measured, and it matches dot for dot. Um, but 14 and a half billion years ago or so, um, the math, ran, we can't get back past the Planck time, which is a, a, a very tiny unit of time between the actual moment um, of the explosion of the singularity uh, or the, the beginning of the expansion of the singularity. So we can't trace back any farther than that. So anything further back is speculation right now. I got you. I see your point. Okay. Now, physicists, and Tracy pointed this out the other day, physicists will often say that time began with the Big Bang. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what, what, I what they're talking that's what about. Understood. That's the way I understood it from my school. Yeah. What they're talking about is that time in the sense of, of um, how, how do how The way Hawking it? says it is that because we can't talk about anything prior to the point right. of expansion you might he says you might as well cut those things out of the theory he's not saying that time didn't exist he's saying there's really no point talking about it prior to the formation of the current incarnation of the universe so time is it's not that he's saying it didn't exist he's simply saying it's not important until this universe forms because at that point we have something we can measure Prior to that, we have nothing we can measure, and so we can't really talk about it. And so let's just let's just say, for the sake of the theory, time starts with our universe. So it's not it's not that he's saying that it actually started with the universe. He's simply saying that's when it becomes relevant to us. However, since we don't actually know um, or or even have a, a good theory uh, understanding of um, the beginning of the current state of our universe, and now that we've cleared up the definitions. What was the actual comment or point that you were going to make? My point was, is in it, believe this, and I'm sure you've heard it all before. It just seems to me <laughs> an intelligent species such as ourselves, it just seems to me, man, that we had to come from some sort of intelligence, that's all. Why? It just seems that some type of a designer or some type of a design said, big bang, bang, be there. Because I kind of believe in the big bang theory. I okay. just think that it had a cause. Not just something random and not just a molecule. That went, something caused that damn thing to go bang. So and and creation is. started, evolution started all at the same time. That's okay. all I'm thinking. So, so you've, you've, you basically said two different things that are unrelated. And I, and I want to make sure that we kind of hit both of them real quick. One okay. you said is that you don't think intelligent people could have come from anything other than an intelligent designer. Yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. know why that is. But before we actually get to that, 
I think the other one may be quicker to address. All right, all right. And that is that you, you believe in the Big Bang, but you think that there must have been some intelligent cause for it. Yeah, you know, like God up there with a cannon and a spiritual being, and he pulled a string and just said, bang, now be created and evolve and go do your things now. and <laughs> That sort of thing, man. That's what I'm why, why, why do you think it's justifiable to posit a supernatural transcendent cause uh -huh. rather than just accepting that it could have happened by a natural cause? Yeah, what, what, what's natural, though, man? What made natural? What made nature? You see what I'm saying? And how do you get to keep going back? You say what natural makes you cause. Think something Where had did to natural make... come from? Where did nature see, come from? You're, you're I'm the specific... kind of guy, dude. I'm the Hang kind on. of guy. I just want to know the why behind the why. That's just how I'm designed. You're know? asking the wrong questions. You're yeah. asking all the wrong questions and all okay. of your questions. Well, maybe I'm talking to the wrong guy about the right questions. Maybe that's it. Well, if you'd let me finish real quick. The, oh, reason, sure. go you're ahead, asking, buddy. Go ahead. the reason you're asking the wrong questions is because your questions presume the nature of the answer. It's like saying... Um, why did the universe exist? That's the wrong question. The question is, the universe exists. What is the explanation? By asking what the explanation is, that leaves open any possibility. And it could be that the explanation is some god type thing created it. Or it could be that it occurred by natural processes that we don't have an understanding of. But when you say why, you imply purpose and design. I sure do. I sure do, man. Yeah, well, you're right. Oh, and I do that on that, purpose. That narrows the possibilities of the answers. It narrows the, the, the directions in which you can look for answers. So you basically, so? you're assuming the answer and then going looking for it. And when you don't find anything that's satisfying, you feel justified in presuming that your original presumption was correct. And that's not the way science works. That's not the way we learn or understand anything. And if we have no way of investigating and no way of understanding what happened prior to the Big Bang, then it's asinine to speculate about the cause, and it's incredibly asinine to make up, oh, it must have been an intelligence because that's what I'm so most you comfortable with. You're not curious about how we got here. I, what, what do you mean? Are, man? Come on. What do you mean? Asinine. No. That's a question that the whole human race is asked. I, I, I never how do said. We get here? I Spirit, man, stop, that's stop, that's stop. stop. I never said I wasn't curious. Okay. I'm not. I'm just saying that I'm not willing to narrow down the answer to why. All right, I'll put you on that. I'm I'll open to any answer. Say you're, that you're, you're, and I. Oh God, your your mind is at least partially closed because you are narrowing the possible answers to only those that you're most comfortable with. That isn't science. It's not reason. It's not logic. It's not wisdom. It's fantasy. It's comfort. You're seeking the answer that you're most comfortable with. And I'm sorry, but that's not a path to truth. I am interested in where all this comes from, but I can also accept that there may be questions that not only do we not have the answer to them now, we may never have the answer to them. So let's instead focus on answering the questions that we can ask, continue to seek out the explanations as best we can, and not narrow the focus of our examination in such a way that we're making appeals to the supernatural. That's just not the way to go about it. You there? I see a point. I, I see a point, sort of. I, I really do. About 50% of it, I see. I, but, but I do keep my open mind. I keep an open mind. So. Okay. I, I got no problem with that. I mean, you're right in, on one level in that we're, we're all interested in the answers to these questions. Um, and I can certainly understand exactly. why people would feel more comfortable personalizing something or anthropomorphizing something so that, I mean, it's nice to think that there may be some intelligence out there that's guiding everything or that cares, uh, but there's no evidence to support that that's possible I'm not or the true. guiding and the caring thing. Hmm? I don't know about that part of it, but I do believe okay. that something created something to move well, along the things so, and I, yeah. I don't know. So, I don't so, know about the, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the, the, so the what created, guiding people and all this other stuff in this. What created and all this other stuff, and I don't know about all the pranks, but I do think that somehow or another, some type of intelligent design created us. Okay, and what created that intelligence? And see, there you go. And that's the sad thing. You're right. You can go backwards and backwards and backwards. So I don't know, man. I'm just one of these curious kind of cats, man, who just always hey, looks you for just a reason did the why. most. And I'm just not just the most for beautiful the God answer. You're you wrong on that part. You just did the most. That part. You just did the if most. That was beautiful. the case, God, I never would have please. called you up. I never would have been interested in what you said. Like most somebody people, fix the damn phone. Turning when they see you talking, you know what I'm saying? They would. They just keep right on turning. 
<laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, you, you can't hear me. It's a problem with the phones. I apologize. I wasn't yelling at you or the crew. I know it's not your fault. It's just, when you hear this back later on the tape, it's going to sound like ass because we're both trying to talk. And maybe I should <laughs> okay. just let you finish. I wanted to compliment you because you just did one of the most beautiful, honest things ever. And that was you said the words, I don't know. Okay. And that's, that's it. I mean, that doesn't mean you stop looking. You know when you stop looking is when you have an answer. And that's one of my biggest objections to religion is because religion pretends to offer, an, offer answers that, All the answers. that also, stop yeah, investigation. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, can I just have a real quick thing? I just wrote to somebody this week, um, and I said, Matt taught me a magic trick, which I have used a couple times, and whenever I do it, people are just like, you're creeping me out because I don't know how you're doing that. And so I do this magic trick, and I get this response, which is, it, first of all, people will be like, this is just too weird, because that's what a magic trick does. It does right. something that seems to defy what makes sense to you. Otherwise, yeah. you're not, it's not a magic trick, right? You, yeah. The guy does something, and you're going, I don't know how he did that. It doesn't, you know, you know he didn't really levitate somebody, but God, you saw him put the hula hoop around her. How does he do this? So I do this magic trick, and people are all freaked out. Well, usually people will say, how did you do that? Okay, how did you do it? Well, in the trick, I pretend, and it's, I mean, everyone knows it's pretense, and I'll be like, okay, get your psychic energy going and whatever, and then the trick goes. Well, people will say when it gets done, how did you do that? And I'll say, it was the psychic energy. It was, it was magic. You know, it's magic. Well, I have yet to meet one person who is satisfied with that answer, who says to me, oh, okay, I guess it's magic. Well, no, people know that there's got to be a real explanation. Magic is not an explanation. And so when people say, and when people put forward God, really what they're saying is, a ma it is magic. It's just magic. We don't know how it was done. It was like this being that's just, it, that can do magic. Yeah, and you, it made you don't the universe. Know. And I you, don't know. You're, you're trying do to answer know. a mystery with a mystery, and you get nowhere. I mean, to me, if, if, you know, we were talking a minute ago about tracing this causal chain backwards forever. What created the universe? Well, a God. Well, what created God? Some other God. And, you, you know, eventually you have to... Uh, supposedly, get to something that always existed. Um, and so the religionists, particularly Christians and, and modern religions, say that God is the thing that always existed. And my answer, which is not unique to me, I mean, this is, this is common among mo like to know who most God. atheists. No, my answer is there's no reason to go back one step to the God. We're already justified in accepting that the universe always existed in some form. There's no reason to, to posit something else beyond it existed. that always existed. As far as um, we know, matter and energy can't be created or destroyed, so for all intents and purposes, as far as we're concerned, it's eternal. Now, that may not be true, yeah. but it's like what Hawking said. You can't go back any further, and in everything we know about this universe, matter can't be created or destroyed, so it's, you know, as far as we know, it's indestructible. And we don't know where it began, so in my mind, it's like, why give those attributes to God and then say he produced it? Just say, you know, this stuff, this matter in itself is in, indestructible and potentially eternal, so, you know, there you go. And, and Tracy, I got to... You know where it came from. Don't you get that? What yeah. I'm saying, I though, is why, what I'm place. saying... I'm just, oh, my God. I right, but I what I'm know. saying where is did that it come from, man? there are people who say it came from a God who is eternal and indestructible. And what I'm saying is why make up a God that's eternal and indestructible when we already have stuff that, as far as we know, is eternal and indestructible. Yeah. So if we have stuff... Right, that we, we have can, stuff. Where did that stuff come from that's eternal if, and indestructible? If it's I eternal, it didn't have to come from exactly. anywhere. It's, it's a thing that we can test and say, you know, we don't know how to make it and we don't know how to destroy it. It just seems to exist and it, we can't stop it. And that's what matter does. So matter is fairly indestructible and as far as we know, we don't think it had a beginning. I mean, there's no way, to, there's no reason to posit that it began Well, I'm a little confused. Else. And what is the Big Bang Theory? Because from what I understand, the Big Bang Theory was when everything started to, to become. That's when no, not to become. to become. Molecules and so forth and no. so on. No. Big Bang. That's what you're, you're misunderstanding the theory. Am I really okay? Yeah. Basically, the Big Bang traces it back to the point where everything that exists, everything in our universe, was yeah. compacted into one tiny singularity. Right. Right, 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 right. Now I don't want you. To, I don't. I don't want to make the claim that the singularity was some, some, some real tangible thing there. Um, but what we're talking about with the Big Bang is the expansion of everything from the singularity outwards, and it proceeds out at a rate that is measurable. And the the force of the explosion can be measured in the cosmic background radiation. I mean, all of this stuff is scientifically confirmable. 
So. Right, right. And it's, and, it's, and it's still expanding, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Although now, it may slow down and contract. That's all I'm saying to you, man. That's all I'm asking. What's that? What started that expansion, I'm asking? Nobody knows. Yeah, Hawking says it's, un it's untraceable at this point. Nobody okay. knows. All right. All we right. have possible theories, but unfortunately, because of the nature of reality, we can't get back beyond the Planck time to the point, to the, to the time of the, the event. Uh, we can't cross the event horizon. Right. Uh, but there are, there are some good theories and there are ideas. And the bigger thing is, is that as long as, even if, even if we never had a good theory, even if everything we, we found just failed and never gave us an answer, that yeah. doesn't mean that God did it ever becomes viable because that's, that is a hypothesis on its own that requires evidentiary support. Right. It needs to be supported. It can't just be, you, to make a claim and then not to support that claim or to support it simply by saying this other claim is false. I understand. So you guys are better off in your mind, more, have more teeth in your mind by just simply saying, okay, you know what? This is just simply unknowable. Correct. Well, well I, would say, I wouldn't say unknowable. unknowable. Whereas, whereas that answer right there is going to have my is, calling day in and day out. Yeah, it's unknown now. Right. I don't know that it's necessarily unknowable. Uh, it may be that we, we come up with an answer. The, the thing, and I don't know if this will help or, or make it more difficult, but um, one thing is to consider, consider the answer. How does saying God created the universe fundamentally any different from saying magical, transcendent, universe-building pixies created the universe? I mean, really, it's not a whole lot of difference. They, they, I mean, because they, neither one of them can be photographed, pictured, or proven. Correct. So, yeah, they, so I can see your point on that, but I mean, I, I mean I've got to have... People, I guess, people in general, because if you, you, you know, if you look at the atheists or if you look at the Christians or should I say people who believe in God, you know you guys are a minority. Oh, yeah. We sure. Are. Okay, okay, cool. So, so you do know that. Yeah. So I think what it is is most human nature people, we have to have some type of answer. We're just not going to go with this is unknowable or unknowing for now. we got to have, and I think that's the difference between different religions. That's why, right, man, it could be a God in heaven with a big beard or some pixies or some aliens or whatever. But, man, we as human beings, man, we're going to pick something, man. Let me, I guess. But we're not going to pick guess. something. Well, I see you playing a whole lot, man. I really do. I do. So, let, me, let me give you really quickly. There's a, a Buddhist story. I won't take up too much of your time, man. I mean, I'm going to... You know, go right. here okay. again, but well, damn, we dude, appreciate I, the call, I really Tracy. Like we'll go ahead. I like how honest you are about how you feel and stuff. Thank you. We appreciate the call, Tracy, and and, okay. and this Tracy will will take more offline. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it's all right. Yeah, we can just go to another call. I, it was just a story that related. It was it was a Buddhist story about um, a person that comes to Buddha and he's complaining. I think I might have said it before on the show, so I don't want to spend too much time. But uh, one of his followers comes and complains that I've come to follow you because people told me that you were this wise master, and ever since I've been here now, it's been five years and. You have never once um, explained like universal origins or and all, all these it's these religious heavy religious questions about you mm -hmm. haven't you know where did the universe come from why are people intelligent why you know all these things that you you've not given me an answer to and Buddha says to him if you were shot with an arrow would you let me remove the arrow or would you tell me I can't take the arrow out until I find out who shot you. And the point being, he's like, I can help you deal with your emotions and deal with your emotional pain, but there, if I don't know, do you have to know the answer to this in order to basically cope with your life? Right. And so Buddha's answer was, these questions don't really matter in the grand scheme of living your life and doing what you need to do and getting by and you know, having emotional control, being fulfilled, being happy does not require that you know who shot you. Certain yeah. questions don't require an answer for you to have a happy life, and one of them is, where did the universe come from? Yeah, I, and you know, this is, I think the, probably the one answer that I, or the one response that I'd, I'd make to Tracy and, and have him think about a little bit more is, towards the end, he made this comment that, you know, we're, we're, you know, we recognize that we're a minority, and he's like, well, we're human beings, man, we want to answer this question, and we're going to believe in something like this. Um, and I'd say, no, that's the whole point. You don't ha it doesn't matter that we're a minority. Um, we don't even need to bring numbers into it. The point I'm making is that you don't have to do that. It's possible to get over. Uh, hey, hit the auto button so that we can see the auto camera move since you're on the wrong person. Because that would have been cool. Come on. <laughs> All right. You don't have to, whether it's the majority doing it, whether it's out of comfort, um, adopt this standard method of... I'm so uncomfortable with not knowing that I'm going to accept some answer, even though there's no good reason to accept it. Uh, that's, I mean, that's not the way to go about things. 
there is a better way. When people say, well, all you do is rail against religion, tell us, what, you know, tell us what's so good about atheism. Well, first of all, as I mention every time, it's not a dogma, it's not a religion, it's not a philosophy, it's not a way of life, um, it's a response to theism. But what I'm talking about with the scientific method, with the naturalistic approach, uh, the philosophical naturalism uh, used as an approach to discovering reality, that's what we're talking about in this case. And that is an incredibly beautiful thing because it is the one and only consistently reliable, independently verifiable method that we have for understanding reality. It's not knowledge that's power, it's understanding. You can know facts and not how to use them. Understanding reality is the best tool that you have. And the best way to hone that tool is to use logic, reason, and evidence. Put that together come up with a method that allows you, and, and you don't have to invent this yourself, it's not particularly hard. It involves critical thinking, skepticism, analysis. How reliable are your sources? Asking yourself those questions allows you to fine tune and hone your mind so that you can believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. That's the key, that's the key to understanding. If there's a question that we don't have an answer to, boy, that's frustrating. It's annoying. I'd love to know how it all started. I'd love to know without any doubt how it all started. I'd like to know every aspect of every element from history uh, that's ever happened to anybody because that would give me the kind of understanding that I could really appreciate. But we can't. I can't know what was going through Napoleon's mind. I can't know. I can't know if Jesus Christ ever existed and if he did, uh, who he was, what he was, what he said, what he did. All I can do is take the best evidence available and piece together and come up with some kind of belief, some, some position to some degree of certainty. And I need to weigh that against the effects of holding those beliefs. Once you do that, you build a model of reality that is useful, accurate, and reliable. That's the key. Don't, you don't have to just, oh, I can't come up with anything better, so God did it. Up. Yeah. You know, when did this become justifiable so that, yes, we're a minority and the majority of people do this. So when in our evolution did it become acceptable and, and not, not just acceptable, lauded for people to accept unreal propositions as if they were real in order to alleviate the discomfort of saying, I don't know. I, it's, it, I can't justify it. We, we haven't gotten in as it's much okay. of your Batman. I mean, and, honestly, I can come back to this on another program. Yeah. We have a lot of calls. And we got, we got full lines, so I just want to keep going through calls. We've only got like 25 minutes left, and I, I don't want to preach or rant for too long anyway.